Palmer's Alive Today presents Horn and Hard Art. Horn and Hardart was a food services company in the United States noted for operating the first food service automats in Philadelphia and New York City. Philadelphia's Joseph Horn, 1861 to 1941, and German-born New Orleans-raised Frank Hardart, 1850 to 1918, opened their first restaurant together in Philadelphia on December 22, 1888. The small 11 by 17 foot lunchroom at 39 South 13th Street had no tables, only a counter with 15 stools. The location had housed the print shop of Dunlap and Claypool Printers to the American Congress and George Washington. By introducing Philadelphia to New Orleans-style coffee blended with chicory, which Hardart promoted as their Gilt Edge brew, they made their tiny luncheonette a local attraction. News of the coffee spread, and the business flourished. They incorporated as the Horn and Hardart Baking Company in 1898. Inspired by Max Seal of Auto Mat restaurants in Berlin they were among the first 47 restaurants and the first non-Europeans to receive patented vending machines from Max Seal of Auto Mat factory in Berlin the creators of the first chocolate bar vending machine for Ludwig still work. The first Auto Mat in the US was opened June 12, 1902 at 818 Chestnut Street in Philadelphia by Horn and Harder. The first New York Auto Mat opened in Times Square July 2, 1912. Later that week another opened at Broadway and East 14th Street near Union Square. In 1924 Horn and Hardart opened retail stores to sell pre-packaged auto mat favorites. Using the advertising slogan Less Work for Mother the company popularized the notion of easily served takeout food as an equivalent to home-cooked meals. The Horn and Hardart auto mats were particularly popular during the Depression era when their macaroni and cheese baked beans and creamed spinach were staple offerings. In the 1930s union conflicts resulted in vandalism as noted by Christopher Gray in the New York Times. In 1932 the police blamed members of the Glaciers Union for vandalism against 24 Horn and Hardart and Bigford's restaurants in Manhattan including the one at 488 8th Avenue. Witnesses said that a passenger in a car driving by used a slingshot to damage and even break the plate glass show windows. Glaciers Union representatives had complained about non-union employees installing glass at the restaurants. By the time of Horn's death in 1941 the business had 157 retail shops and restaurants in the Philadelphia and New York areas and served 500,000 patrons a day. During the 1940s and the 1950s more than 50 New York Horn and Hardart restaurants served 350,000 customers a day. In 1953 the company split into two independent corporations the New York company was named the Horn and Hardart Company while the Philadelphia company was named the Horn and Hardart Baking Company. New York was traded on the American Stock Exchange and Philadelphia was traded on the Philadelphia Stock Exchange. These cafeterias featured prepared foods behind small glass windows and coin-operated slots beginning with buns beans fish cakes and coffee. These were popular busy restaurants where in the late 1950s for under $1 one could enjoy a large if somewhat plain meal purchased with nickels usually obtained from the cashier. Each stack of glass door dispensers had a metal cylinder that could be rotated by the staff on the other side of the vending wall hiding the contents while they refilled each dispenser in the stack with a plate of salad pudding meat or vegetables. Each dispenser had a slot for one or more nickels and a knob to rotate the nickels out of view into the internal cash box and to allow the glass door to be raised up and locked in a horizontal position for easy removal of the plate or bowl of food. More expensive items required tokens valued up to 75 cents which were available from the cashier. Some of the rectangular dispensers were heated, some cooled. Eventually, they served lunch and dinner entrees such as beef stew and Salisbury steak with mashed potatoes. The self-service restaurants 
once operated in the city for nearly a century. Carolyn Hughes Crowley described the appeal of the auto mats, in huge rectangular halls filled with shiny lacquered tables women with rubber tips on their fingers nickel throwers as they became known in glass booths gave customers the 5 cent pieces required to operate the food machines in exchange for larger coins and paper money. Customers scooped up their nickels then slipped them into slots in the auto mats and turned the chrome plated knobs with their porcelain centers. In a few seconds the compartment next to the slot revolved into place to present the desired cold food to the customer through a small glass door that opened and closed. Diners picked up hot foods at buffet-style steam tables. The word automat comes from the Greek automatos meaning self-acting, but automats weren't truly automatic. They were heavily staffed. As a customer removed the compartment's contents of behind the machine human quickly slipped another sandwich salad, piece of pie or coffee cake into the vacated chamber. The restaurant chain remained popular into the 1960s featuring not only automats but sit-down waitress service restaurants, cafeterias and bakery shops. In the late 1960s consultants attempted to develop automats with interior decoration relevant to surrounding neighborhoods, thus the automat on 14th Street was decorated with psychedelic posters. The eateries began to close with the rise of fast food restaurants served over the counter and with more payment flexibility than traditional automats. By the mid 1970s at some locations Burger King franchises replaced the automats. Horn and Hardard further expanded its fast food operations in 1981 with its acquisition of the Bojangles famous chicken and biscuits restaurants which it sold to a California investment company in 1990 for 20 million dollars. In 1979 Horn and Hardard agreed to buy the Royal Inn in Las Vegas for $7.4 million. By late 1980 the sale had been completed and the property was rebranded as the Royal Americana Hotel with a New York theme. A $3.5 million renovation increased the room count to 300. By 1982 though, the hotel was experiencing substantial losses and Horn and Hardard decided to close it. They reportedly agreed that December to sell the property to an investment group for $15.4 million. Dollars. The last New York Horn and Harder Automat on the southeast corner of 42nd Street and 3rd Avenue closed in April 1991. Horn and Harder continued to own a catalog division, it renamed itself Hanover Direct in 1993. That year the company bought Gumps, it sold it to an investment group in 2005. Hanover Direct purchased International Mail in 1987 when founder Gene Burkard retired. In 1987, Horn and Hardart opened two 1950s themed Dinomat restaurants in New York. They closed in 1989 after less than two years in operation. In the early 1990s two entrepreneurs bought the Philadelphia company, Horn and Hardart Baking Company, out of bankruptcy. While they did not open any restaurants, they did reproduce a dozen of the most famous food items including macaroni and cheese, Harvard beets tapioca pudding and cucumber salad. The food was packed fresh refrigerated and sold in supermarkets throughout Philadelphia and New Jersey. The food was still available up until 2002 then disappeared from the stores. More recently the Horn and Hardard name was used for a now dormant chain of coffee shops in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. The Horn and Hardard Coffee Company closed its last coffee shop in 2005. A company called Horn and Hardard Brands has a website with a 2014 copyright offering coffee online and at food stores in the Philadelphia area. A version of the current automats used in the Netherlands BAM, was located in New York's East Village at 37 St. Mark's Place between 2nd Avenue and 3rd Avenue, but has since closed, though their website is still active. Currently the Horn and Harder Bakery Cafe is the name of a coffee shop in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania.
The assets of the company were purchased in 2015 and the brand is being reborn as Horn and Hardard Coffee. They have recreated the original East Coast City Roast and branded coffee is offered on their website. They also offer a subscription service called the Automat Club. If you have any fond memories, please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like.